Imagine this, you've bought your nice budget four core i7-3770 all in one PC. You're gonna try and slap a graphics card in it and try and flip it and make some money. But there's this weird error that's occurring when you try to boot it. Now it's going beep, 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 and then it's having a break and then it's going beep, beep, beep again. And when we check, since it is an Ace of Veriton M6620G, we check the user manual and it doesn't show any errors reporting or pertaining to this uh, beep code. However, upon searching on Google, which Google's gonna be a great resource for finding out uh, things that you need that other people have experienced, especially in the case of them experiencing the exact same problem, we found that this is actually an undocumented error with this particular motherboard in that the boot block has become corrupted. And so what we have now is this system working where we've installed Windows, just a basic install of Windows, and we're going to try from here on in just flashing the BIOS. But first off, I wanna show you exactly what the problem is because initially I took out two sticks of RAM and it booted up fine. So I was like, wow, okay, we've probably got one faulty stick of memory when in actual fact, it's the motherboard itself. So we're gonna show you the error and what to do to get around it and how to try and get your PC to boot if you come into a problem like this. And then of course, after that, we're gonna show you the solution and that is to reflash the BIOS. And in the case of an OEM, we've really got a uh, locked down Windows update flash. So let's just dive into these problems. Have you built a PC recently only to be met with a Windows needs activation message in the bottom right hand corner, even whilst you're playing games? Well, if you wanna get rid of this message and you don't wanna spend $200 plus on a key, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered for as little as 15 bucks after using the coupon code TYCSK, you can get yourself a single end user license. That's the legitimate keys quickly and easily. Then you get the key, click on change product key in Windows activation, paste that key in there, click next, and you're good to go. Links in description below to get your key today. So what we found with this motherboard in particular, it's just a matter of trial and error where we initially uh, took out two of the RAM sticks after changing the CMOS battery, and then it didn't boot. It still gave us out an error message. So what we found with this motherboard in particular, it likes two sticks of memory in the blue slots. So if I try and boot it with one stick of memory, it's gonna give us those same beep codes. But for some bizarre reason, if we reinsert two sticks of memory here in the uh, same two blue slots, we have a decent chance of it booting up. So again, we're just trying to salvage this motherboard here without try, trying to entangle a power supply wire on it. And we hopefully should get a boot out of it this time. Nope, that is another problem. So this is just what it is with this, the corrupted boot cycle. We've just got to keep on going and seeing what we can do. Even trying things like taking out the uh, power supply out, the power cable out the back here. Just trying to reinsert that. Uh, basically until we can get this thing to boot into Windows again, so we're able to do a BIOS flash. And so luckily, that was, that was really weird because just uh, putting the power cord out and in again, actually um, we got the error message up here. That allowed us to boot again. So very, very bizarre problem. I actually haven't run into this specific problem before. I mean, I have seen it with gigabyte motherboards uh, where you've had to initiate the backup BIOS, which has flashed the original BIOS because that's become corrupted. But uh, in this case here, it's, it's sort of, it's just one of those weird things where, I don't know, strange. Anyway, let's get into Windows and try and flash this thing and see if it fixes it. So we can see now it is flashing the BIOS on this lovely little Veriton here, but it was a, initially it was a case of mistaken identity where we had this BIOS on the website said not for upgrades or something, but anyway, that BIOS probably doesn't work. I mean, Acer do some weird things where I'm guessing you can only flash, reflash the original BIOS on that um, 
motherboard itself. So we'll see how this goes. Let's uh, see if this works and then it solves our problems. Fingers crossed. This is good news. It looks like the reset for the first time has worked normally. So this has hopefully fixed our problems. We're just gonna continue. That's right, we're just gonna hit continue. We don't even need to go into the BIOS. We're that confident that our PC is now working normally. Of course, we're going to uh, try and install the other two sticks of memory now and set this whole computer up and then maybe run a heaven benchmark. I mean, if I got a bit of free time, I may even play a bit of Fortnite on it, who knows? I should probably just call it something else. Exactly. What is it? Content. So the Unigine Heaven benchmark and also Fortnite checked out absolutely fine. We've now installed the 16 gigabytes of RAM. Everything's booting fine. Everything has been alleviated. Though this problem really marks something that's going to worry me a little bit going forward. And that is a phenomenon known as data degradation, AKA bit rot. And in this case, the BIOS boot block or that little chip that holds the uh, BIOS firmware that obviously degraded over time where it's basically, I researched up about it and the uh, insulation on the chip itself isn't perfect. So over time, the electrical charges that hold the data lose their charge. And so basically reflashing the BIOS essentially can give it another 10 years of life or so before it starts to become corrupted again. And so it is a worry for not just uh, BIOS boot blocks, but other things like DVD drives or if you've got uh, old game cartridges then sealing them in a perfect uh, sealed environment is one thing to consider if you wanna keep hold of that, especially if you're like a collector or something like that. Though in relation to PCs like this, reflashing your BIOS, whether it's an OEM or if it's an older Zeus or MSI or Gigabyte or ASRock motherboard may help bring that PC back to a fully working order where nothing essentially is faulty on the motherboard, but rather over time that BIOS boot block, which holds that firmware, has just become corrupted. Though we solved today's problem quickly and easily, one thing that does leave me scratching my head and I am quite concerned about, and I don't have the answer for, and I'd love it if you guys chimed in in the comments and if you knew a definitive answer, that would be amazing. And that is, what about the firmware on the CPU as well as the USB controllers and the SATA controllers? Are they susceptible to the same bit rot over time? And what do we do to alleviate that if that becomes corrupt? So that's one thing I'm left uh, not knowing the answer to because it could cause problems in the future perhaps. I uh, love reading your thoughts and opinions on this, but we've essentially made this computer work like brand new again. It's absolutely fine. And it was a weird problem, which I have come into, but not for this particular model precisely. Anyway, with that aside, if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And we've got the question of the day, which comes from Gary Buckman. And they asked, do you think I could go higher than 4.5 gigahertz with a Corsair H50? And they're referring to the Xeon X5675, which we did in this video, I'll put the link up here. And essentially I found that these CPUs go from around 4.4 to 4.6 gigahertz, even with a H50 or even a better 240 all in one liquid cooler. Uh, though if you are in really cold ambient environments, I have heard people getting these stable to like 4.7, 4.8 gigahertz with the right motherboard and power supply. Your mileage may vary. I just think 4.5 gigahertz is usually a level that you can obtain on these CPUs with a pretty good cooler, pretty good motherboard, pretty good power supply day in, day out. And I live in pretty much hotter ambient conditions and that's the levels that I'm finding personally. So you may be able to get uh, higher. You've just got to test that for yourself and be the judge. Anyway, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying the content and you're not yet subbed, then you know what to do. 
options are down there for that. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.